So about six months ago, I was browsing over on Reddit and came across what has to be the filthiest looking resin 3D printer that I have ever seen and it was up for sale. And I've been wondering, what happened to that absolutely disgusting looking resin 3D printer? Well, it just so happens that I ended up buying them and in today's video, we're gonna be seeing how we can clean the acrylic panels on your resin 3D printers. So I ended up buying the units off of that user, off of Reddit about six months ago. They arrived properly in the mail. They were actually packaged up fairly nicely. Unfortunately, one thing that that user did before, I think there was just some miscommunication, and this is again was happening a number of months ago, was that they ended up trying to clean up some of the panels, and I was like, no, I wanted to go through and actually show off how filthy and disgusting they were. But you'll see here on this green one that they actually were able to clean it up a good bit, but it's still really fogged over. So I wanna see if we can also deal with some of the fogginess that you might be able to see there. But on the actual wash and cure unit, it's still absolutely disgusting. Now, the good news is the resin 3D printer still works properly and they said it was still working properly. They just wanted to maybe upgrade or move on to something else. So I was able to actually run off and print something from Photos Mint here on the Mars 2 and everything looks like it printed properly. And working with resin in a resin 3D printer is just, it's a messy process to begin with. Thankfully, something like a slat mat here from Wham Bam helps keep the resin mess from pulling your print off of the printer and removing the print from the print bed, makes it a little bit easier of a cleanup process. It keeps it a little bit more contained. However, this individual user, you know, no fault. It's, it's, it, it worked okay for them, took the print, after it was finished printing, and it looks like they typically would sit it on top of the wash and cure station <laughs> uh, cover here, and then just the excess resin would drip down, and it looks like they maybe they'd wipe it clear and occasionally try to clean it with some of the UV light, which is how this thing just got absolutely caked with resin. Now I'm also pretty guilty of having some fairly disgusting looking resin 3D printer acrylic tops here, like this one that has resin somehow cured on the inside of these panels. And what I'm gonna be using to clean off the acrylic panels is not isopropyl alcohol. You might be thinking, oh, I use isopropyl alcohol in my wash and cure stations to clean off the resin from my resin 3D prints. However, when you rub isopropyl alcohol on your acrylic panels, it causes them to dull and fade even more. So what I'm gonna be using is a little bit of warm water and some Dawn dish soap in some form of a container. Now, potentially you don't have to wet sand, but that's what I'm gonna be doing here especially as I'm moving my way up into those higher grips of sandpaper. And yes, this is gonna be a little bit more time consuming than potentially some other options. And if you have other options, let me know in the comments below because this is the only option that I thought might actually work properly based on seeing people clean off their front headlights doing similar methods. What's also kind of cool along the way while doing this is seeing some of the gunk fly off of these cases as you're scraping away at it. And while I'm busy sanding my life away, I want to take a moment to say thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of some amazing resin and FDM 3D printers like the Elegoo Mars 3 and the upcoming Elegoo Mars 4 that'll be showing off here in the next few days. And they just launched a Kickstarter campaign for their very first laser engraver, the Fecto. You can find more information about Elegoo's products listed below. Now, I don't know how well this is gonna work, but my arms are getting tired from sanding. So I'm gonna attempt to use a 220 grit sandpaper on my mouse, you know, hand sander. All right, that worked way too well. <laughs> Also in between each of the cleanings, I'm just going through and trying to mop up some of the sanding dust and wetness here from the wet sanding. Additionally, if you wanted to wear a respirator or something like that throughout this process, you could totally do that since we are sanding cured resin, which isn't exactly the best for you. However, since I'm wet sanding, it's really keeping a lot of those particles down and making it more easily uh, so that I can wipe those up and not airborne as much. But uh, yeah, obviously there's some risk involved with that anytime you're dealing with resin particles. The hardest area for me to reach and sand is the very top inside of these acrylic cases. It's just really hard to get into and properly sand. Now, after your first round of sanding with that 220 grit sandpaper, 
Things are gonna look a little dusty and dull here, but don't worry, we're gonna continue on sanding with a higher grit sandpaper. Now, I'm gonna be jumping straight into 1000 grit. You could go up to 600 if you have that and then work your way up to 1000, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna keep things at 1000. And once I'm finished with all of that sanding, I'm gonna rinse off the lids and make sure that they're nice and clean, then sit them outside to air dry before moving on to the next step, which involves some auto body compound and a few rags. One thing that I didn't tell you was during this little experiment here, I ended up just using the 220 grit sandpaper on this first one here, and I'm gonna apply the compound to it to see what the results look like. Then on this one, I used a thousand grit sandpaper uh, or up to the 220 and the thousand grit sandpaper. And then on the last one here, I used the 220, 1000 and 2000 grit sandpaper on this last one here. So we're gonna see how these compare with putting in a little extra effort along the way, or if you can just get away with using the 220 here and see some good results. All right, so we're gonna put a little on the rag here and let's start spreading this on. And then with a dry towel, we can just go back over everything and kind of just buff it out. And hopefully these will clear up even more. And for the final step of the process, we're gonna be using some of this auto body polisher to see how this works. Again, never done this before. So fingers crossed this actually works. It's still kind of faded on most of these. I'm not entirely sure if this worked as well as I thought it was going to. It definitely ended up cleaning up a bunch of the cured resin that was on top of them, but these are definitely still a good bit more faded than I would have liked to have seen. The first one that we're gonna take a look at here is the yellow UV cover that was initially covered in just a lot of resin there. And it ended up getting cleaned up very nicely, but again, it's very fuzzy and faded here. This was only using the 220 grit sandpaper, then using the compound and then the polish. So it's nice and smooth and you're not really feeling all of the nastiness from the, the cured resin that was on there previously. However, you're not exactly able to see through this as well as we were previously, even with it coated in resin. Now the next one is the green UV top that was using the 220 grit, then the thousand grit, the compound and the polishing. This one is so smooth to touch and it's a good bit clearer looking than the yellow acrylic one that we saw there previously. And it's still not as translucent as I would have liked it to been, but it's again, really nice and clean. And finally is the option that we went all the way up to 2000 grit sandpaper and this one looks so much better, but again, is not that crystal clear looking acrylic that I was hoping this would achieve. Now, I'm wondering if I went all the way up to 3000 or even higher than that, could I potentially get a clear finish on this? More than likely. Or if I use some additional tools, yeah, more than likely. And for anyone curious, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of one of the UV tops that has not been cleaned up, but it still has a little bit of resin residue cured on it. So it's not entirely clear and clean, but as you can see here, it's a lot clearer than the one that we attempted to clean up and shine up. So I'm jumping in. I was in the process of editing this video and it was driving me nuts that I didn't get the clear results that I was hoping for. So I decided to go back through and re-sand one of these yellow panels here, starting at 1000, then 1500, then 2000, 2500, all the way up to 3000. And then, Look at the results that I'm seeing. This is so much clearer than what I was seeing before. This is getting very close, very close to what the original panel looked like. I am honestly, yeah, I think that's the trick. You just need to go up higher in the sanding, the wet sanding that you're doing, and then go ahead and try and polish this. I also ended up using here, I ended up having one of these headlight restoration kits. So that's what I ended up using for part of this here. And it even had a sanding pad that I could have been using the entire time, which would have made this whole project a whole lot easier. Also, I ended up using this Meguiar's Plastics, which is a clear plastic cleaner and polish all in one. So I'll have links, I'll try and find links to this down below where you can pick this up. I'm gonna be using this moving forward instead of the compound and the polisher, just because this turned 
out so much clearer here on this one side. But I think the results are pretty good. If you have tips or suggestions on how to further improve this, let me down in the comments below. I might be doing a follow up on this. I also want to take a minute to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here on the internet. If you're interested in things like my resin three printer settings, you can find those over in my Patreon. And if you end up attempting this little cleaning project yourself, make sure to tag me online because I would love to see the results. And hopefully this video helps some of you out there when it comes to to finding ways to clean up your filthy resin 3D printers. Hey, thanks again for watching you all. I'll see you next time.